Hey guys, time for another tips video to help you improve your game in Hunt Showdown. Be sure to subscribe for future tips because it seems there is always something new to learn. And as last time, leave your tips for other players down below. Number one, clear hive swarms with flares. One of the biggest changes coming out of 110 is the new way to kill hive swarms. You have probably used a flare gun to kill a hive before, but this change makes flares and fusees even more useful. Now, if you are attacked by a hive you can't see or near a green barrel that might come back to hurt you, you can shoot a quick flare to clear the hazard. Number two, kite enemies with the stalker beetle. Stalker beetles have the same aggro behavior as hunters do, so they can disturb dog kennels, scare birds, and aggro AI enemies. If you have a free moment after starting a banish, you can make it harder to approach the compound by positioning enemy AI to your liking. Just fly up to the enemy of your choice and let them follow you to the desired spot. Number 3. Save bodies before a banish Another tip for the bounty compound, if you kill a team nearby before picking up the bounty tokens, be sure to save the loot charge on a hunter so you can restore your dark sight. This can give you a free safety check to see if the coast is clear. Number 4. Discard items quietly in water. You've probably seen other players do this, but it's good to know for new players. If you ever loot a consumable you don't think will be that useful, for example a chaos bomb, you can discard the item in water. This will prevent the detonation and you can often find a resupply somewhere in the swamp. Be sure to check your local gambling laws before doing this though. Number 5. Throw chokes near bodies, not on them. Sometimes your buddy dies in a prime location to get burned, but also a prime location for a risky revive. You probably know that chokes can extinguish fires, but they also have a bit of bloom in the initial detonation. Toss a choke near your buddy, not on him, to keep quiet revives possible. However, act fast because they can be burned again outside the safety of a choke cloud. Number 6. Rebind Vault to a Different Key I always thought this sounded kind of gimmicky, but I don't know, it's been long enough and I never think about it anymore. Not all obstacles are built the same in the bayou, and having vault and jump on the same key can mean accidentally vaulting over places you don't want to. Rebinding vault to a different key can allow you to jump to peek over obstacles without risking going over them. Also, in some spots, you can jump instead of vault and avoid the vulnerable animation where you put away your gun. Now if I could force myself to keybind my equipment. Number 7. You can hide in chicken coops. Okay, this is not the most tactical strategy, but it is an option. Chicken coops make a lot of noise, but what Big Chicken doesn't want you to know is that there's a secret room in the back. Hop in a coop, find your hiding spot, and stand still. Eventually, the chicken's dinosaur vision will lose track of you. However, the lantern is still a risk, and this doesn't work in dog kennels, despite how much I want it to. Number 8. Use the Nixitec hosted damage calculator. One of the most difficult things to learn and master is the damage falloff for every weapon. Thankfully, this tall glass of water took matters into his own hands and hosted a damage calculator on his website. It isn't quite up to date at the time of making this video, but what better motivator for change than social pressure? I know, sending people to his website seems selfless, but it's the least I could do for having a tribute to me at the top of the page. Number 9. Check elevators when you prep an area. Audio is a crucial element in this game and elevator shafts are just one extension of that. If you get stuck in a compound fight or just need to prep a bounty compound, check the position of the local elevator. In some compounds, the position of the car can mean enemies can silently or quickly gain access to you. If you are protecting upstairs, pull the cars up toward you to double the time and sound it takes to ascend. If you are downstairs, it might be beneficial to send the car up to avoid enemies dropping down on you. Number 10. Left peak advantage is a thing. Hopefully this tip eventually becomes obsolete, but if you are new to the game, you should know the position of the perspective camera is not exactly center. Instead, it is placed slightly to the left. This one detail can greatly change the course of a gunfight because it changes how much of your player model is visible. Peeking from the left exposes less of your body than peeking from the right, which can give you crucial milliseconds to shoot. Alright, that's 10 more tips to make you a better player. You can check out the previous videos using the links in the pinned comment. Until the next video, goodbye. Good job. Thankfully, this tall glass of water, gulp, took matters. <laughs>
All right.